We'll go back now to one of the most hotly contested races in South Florida, the race for Senate District 38. The district stretches from Overtown to Golden Beach and includes some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the county and some of the poorest. State Senator Daphne Campbell served in the House and has been in the Senate for two years. She has been dogged by ethical questions. Her opponent, Jason Pizzo, a former Miami State attorney, this is his second race against her. Welcome to both of you. I want to, like I said, my plan is this isn't a formal debate in the sense of I'm going to give you 60 seconds, 30 seconds for rebuttal. I want to have a conversation. And I think I want to start with probably one of the most pressing issues in the district that includes Liberty City and Little Haiti is the issue of gun violence. Senator Campbell, I want to talk to you about what plans you have and what you've done and what you would propose to do to try to stymie the gun violence going on in, the, in, in our community. First of all, let me say thank you to you for inviting me this morning and giving me that opportunity to, you know, clear my name and, and talk to the issue for the district because um, I have other people who claim they did call me and send me email and I never, I don't have no record of that. So I thank you a lot sure. for that opportunity. Yes, you know, I've been in the office for uh, six years as a state representative and two years as a state senator and I um, filed bills to even, you know, stop people getting the, the, getting even the gun permit by asking, you know, the bill says, before you get the gun permit, you have to have a, a background checks and level two background. NRA for eight years, you know, they rate me on F, and I'm proud to have the F. And as a state senator for Liberty City, what I have done in Tallahassee to make sure, you know, we help uh, the youth and to stop the violence, I give $100,000 to a, uh, a Liberty City program to, to help the youth, and uh, I bring um, $2 million to Poinciana to help them to get jobs, because if they get jobs, that could stop okay. the gun violence. I wanna, I want to bring uh, uh, Mr. Pizzo, you were a Miami-Dade state attorney for a number of years. What is your recipe for trying to cure gun violence? Background checks, more programs for youth. That's what Senator Campbell is proposing. Are those bad ideas or do you have different ideas? Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Senator Campbell. Morning. Thank you for having me back. The question was about Liberty City. And in Miami-Dade County, especially Liberty City, it's kids killing kids. So background checks are great. Assault rifle bans are great. But what's killing the kids in Liberty City are teenagers killing teenagers. They don't, they don't apply for background checks. They don't go through gun show, gun show loopholes. They're not sponsored by the NRA. We have kids killing kids. My plan is very simple and somewhat technical in nature, and it's gleaned from all of the hundreds of hours that I spent in Liberty City staring over the bodies of kids who are shot or killed. And it has to do with the social media that we have right now. Law enforcement should have access and should be able to make contact with individuals, especially teenagers, who are brandishing firearms and creating threats to their, school, to their classmates. I also believe that we should register shell casings when they're manufactured at the factory before they enter the stream of commerce so they're, so they're available. So we don't need two shootings to compare shell casings, two deaths of children to compare shell casings. So in other words, when the shell casing is, te when, the, when the gun is test fired, keep that, keep that record of what that, what that firing pin looks like and have that as a permanent registry. That intention, that intention is more distinct than a human fingerprint. And so anyone who would seek to challenge or try to uh, have standing against that idea would be anticipating committing a serious felony crime. Go ahead. Well, um, what he's saying is irrelevant at this moment because I served this district for eight years. I've been there for all the shooting. Not going when it's a shooting to take a picture to just show you know you're there for them. And in Tallahassee, all Democrats we have bills to ban assault weapons. And as a matter of fact, this is why the reason the bill they had for seven zero to six you. Know, the, the gun bill in Tallahassee, I voted against it because what Parkland student did ask, they didn't get what they want. Liberty City have been having shooting for, dec for decades. So, you know, my opponent tried to make sure like that's only, that's all they have in Liberty City. No. When it's a shooting in Liberty City, I am there, be there for the parents, talk to the parents, and see what they want. Right. With the three Real want. briefly, I want to Jim. give you a chance to respond, and then we're going to move on to the next, the next issue. Uh, Jim, I, I'm in Liberty City for years with the parents, 
over the bodies of the children and trying to bring them justice. To say that I'm going to take a picture is disrespectful to the victims, to the next of kin, and to what we're trying to do in Liberty City. I want, I want to go, turn to education. Uh, Senator Campbell, it's, it seems that you've been a major proponent for increasing funding for charter schools. Do you think that charter schools is a better option than, than public school financing? That is not true, because as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the bill, the budget, for $88.7 billion, I vote against it. I vote against it because I wasn't happy with the money they give to charter school, with the 47 cents increase they give to kids for public school. I voted against it because I wasn't happy because the teachers didn't have no increased pay in the t for the teachers, for the police officers, for, uh, for a veteran. So the budget didn't have enough, so I didn't, but, you support, be, but have you supported charter schools in the past? If I, yes, I do. But you know, when I find out what, you know, how the public school being treated and the, the edge, you know, the money they give, being given them, my kids went to public school, so I always did for public school. And if you could see one of my my agenda uh, for next year is to make sure, you know, we have adequate state funding for public school. Tomorrow, kids will return to school in Miami-Dade County. And though the teachers work very hard and the school district does what they can, a little over $7,000 per student is just purely inadequate. And I commend the teachers for their hard work and what they're doing with what little resources. It's not okay and it's not enough just to vote against something. It's what are you advocating for? What bills are you passing? How are you fighting? How are you reaching across the aisle? How are you advocating for your community to, to show the good old boys in Tallahassee that the students here need more funding and they surely do it's not okay just to cast a vote it's what are you actually legislating for what are you able to bring from right. across the aisle? I want to I want to move I want to just move briefly to a, a number of issues we got we, you know I want to talk about the issue of abortion uh, Senator Campbell you have voted and I'm just looking through your record in 2011 you voted to require a woman to have an ultrasound and listen to a description of the fetus in 2015 you voted for a 24-hour waiting period for a woman before she could re receive an abortion. Uh, in tw 2016, you voted for a bill that would restrict um, um, Planned Parenthood from receiving money even for non-abortion related items. You have made no, you've never hidden the fact that you come at this from a very religious point of view, that you believe that you were put in the legislature by God. Is your opposition to abortion complete? Well, l l let me make it clear. Yes, this is, women have their choice and they have the right to choose, that's their body. But I have my choice. And I said all the time, because of my personal issues, and I've said it over and over, why? Because I have a child right now who's 25 years old. When I was pregnant with the child, when I was three months old, I was blind. And I spent six months at Bascom Palmer when they asked me to do an abortion. I said, no way. That was 1992. But I want to be so, clear, that was your choice. That was my choice. And, and But would you prevent women from receiving no, abortion? No, I would never prevent women to do whatever they want to do to their body. But that's my opinion. That's my personal issue. That's what I did. Let me say something to you. You come up with that, and I'm glad you come up with that. You know, my opponent talking about is again abortion. But here, this is what he sent to a family. You know, this one talk about his fighting for our family. Same address, one is Republican and white, one is black Democrat. The Democrat have well, let different me, let me, messages. Let me just, so, we just say on the so issue of abortion. abortion. Yes, uh, so abortion. On, uh, with, regard to, with regard to abortion, where do you stand on the woman's right to choose? And Senator Campbell yeah. says that she supports a woman's right to choose. They, they're supposed to, listen, that's their choice. And that's okay. their body. It is a deeply personal decision, and it's a woman's right to decide and determine the course for her own body. And the irony is, is that Senator Campbell's very personal experience speaks to the idea that it's very personal. However, her legislative, her, her votes on, on particular parts of legislation would seek to abridge and curtail the ability of a woman to do that, to have that choice, and abridge and prohibit from doing so. Your, your district represents, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You want to make a quick but point? Jim, I don't understand why my opponent talking about vote. He hasn't voted for eight years. He became first time Democrat 2016. He cast his first vote 2016. So what did he know about, let me, let me make it clear, because I have to bring this up. They so, you know, it's so sad. They even put Democratic Party 
took their logo, sent me a letter they claimed from the day before, said they sent it to me, and I received it the day after in the afternoon with our no signature. When I called the Democratic Party, oh, wait, wait, we don't have nothing. Okay. No, no, this is have to be clear because it's a part of what you I wanna, just I said. Just, uh, so I want to just, so she raised the issue. I want to want to bring it up then before moving on to the next issue. Um, what has your, been your party affiliation? How long have you been a Democrat? And are you basically a Johnny come lately to the Democratic Party? Uh, like many judges and many prosecutors, I was non-party affiliated while I was prosecuting crimes in, involving the life and liberty of other individuals. And in 2016, I registered as a Democrat to, to run for this race. Now, I have purely Democratic values. I espouse and endorsed and push and pledge and promise to respect, to honor and legislate on Democratic values. I am a Democrat. And we have a stark division and contrast in our policy ideas, in our ideology, as it relates to a woman's right to choose, gay adoption, same-sex marriage. We are diametrically opposed. And so to say I haven't voted so in eight years, Jim, I ran in 2016. That would suggest I didn't vote for myself when I ran a campaign. So, so, let's, so let's, talk about, let's talk about gay issues. How? You represent, the, the district you represent includes Miami Beach. Correct. Right. right? Miami Beach, right. Miami Shores. You, in 2015, you voted to keep a ban on gay adoptions. Is that correct? Correct. Right. And, and I'm going to explain. Okay. And then the gay have their, hold on, Jim. The gay people have their rights. I have my rights. Of course, I took an oath to serve everyone. I don't discriminate. I have gay people working in my office. I have gay friends. But they have their rights. I have my rights. Yes, they believe in uh, opposite uh, sex. I believe in they believe, they believe on same sex. I believe on do opposite you, sex. Do you, you, so, do you believe that uh, that uh, gays should be allowed to marry in the state of Florida? Well, um, this is their choice. That's their choice. That's their rights. And um, what they do in their bedroom, that I don't have nothing to do with it. But you said before, I mean, I've seen you quoted as saying, it's clear in the Bible marriage is between a man and a woman. And so, so but you disagree. You That's exactly right, James. But you the disagree Bible, with the, the ability Bible, of... But they have their rights. The Christian have rights. The gay people have their rights. Why did you vote to uh, gay adoption? You think that's wrong? You think that gays should not be allowed to adopt? Well, let me let me make it clear. If gay want to be adopt a kids, that's their rights. No, no, but but you voted. But again, that's in 2015, you voted on House Bill 7013, yes, 7013, yes, which would have kept the ban in place. So that's you voting to say your beliefs are more important than their rights. No, that's not true. You, this is this is constitution rights. And this is freedom of speech, freedom of religion. They have their right to do whatever they have to do. And I do represent gay for eight years, and I have gay staff in my office. So I don't have no problem with gay. I hear my opponent walking around and passing flyers says, you know, I'm anti-gay. This is wrong. You cannot do this. I'm anti-gay. That's wrong. You also and sponsored, then, you also were co-sponsored the, the bathroom bill in 2015, which would have targeted transgender people from being able to use the bathroom they identify gym, with. Yes, because the bathroom, everywhere you go, they say women bathroom, men bathroom. Are you, if you are a woman, you in the bathroom, would, do you want somebody else was, to be in the was bathroom? Was this an issue? Was this, a, was this a problem, though, that needed to be legislated? This is still, again, that's their rights. How much is race playing an issue in this race, do you believe? I, I believe it's uh, playing an issue purely for my opponent to distract and deter from um, what, what the mission of, of legislating, of, oh, but, of putting well, someone well, in let office. Me just, let's, put, let's put this on the table. Uh, Senator Campbell is the only Haitian American in the Florida Senate. Is, it, is there not an argument to be made that, the, that a district that includes Little Haiti, uh, that there should be, uh, with a large Haitian population in Florida, should have Haitian representation in Tallahassee? Are you really the best person to represent Little Haiti in the African American community? Huh? To your first point about uh, Haitian Americans legislator, Daphne Campbell has had eight years. And in the same Senate District 38, it's evenly split demographically between African American, white, and Hispanic. Almost a third, a third, a third. So eight years with Daphne Campbell. This is Jim. For me, it, it, it cannot be and should not be about race. It should be the content of character. It should be your ideology and your philosophy and your policy and your ability to get things done. Surely, victims. Surely, the kids are going back to school tomorrow. The lack of affordable housing, climate change, and those issues are not race-related, nor should they be, unless it's a, a feckless tactic. Go ahead, Jim, 
this is um, a, for, to him is a race because how can someone every single day they have my name on every Miami Herald talking about other people who committed crimes, said I'm corrupted, I've never been arrested, I've never been in no trouble with the law. So sending all but these when, negative... On the, on the issue, on Jim, on the issue, on of, race, on on issue of race, though, I, on your Facebook page, you have a video that says, we have to vote for our own. Is that the right message to, to, to put out there that African Americans have to vote for their own to represent them in Tallahassee? The, uh, listen, the video, the person who made the video, that's all Oh, well, it's right. you on the video. No, I'm on the video. Of You're saying the words. I am, I, of course I said, vote it for me because I've been serving the district um, very well. I represent the community very well. Look at how much money I went for the district. I went for City of Miami, $1.125 million. Yeah. Non-custodial parents, you know, $1.46 okay. All done, all done. You know, children initiative. No, no, but so do, by the way, that, but I just want to say th this: there's a flyer you pointing out flyers. This flyer is this? Did this come from you? The flyer? I don't right. know. Who, I don't know. Do the flyer? But, but well, regardless of that, I how many nurse, innocent? This is a flyer that went out against against him, saying, "Vote for Daphne Campbell." How many innocent black men has he prosecuted? It's, do you think that, that he is, is disqualified because, as a prosecutor, he was putting young black men in jail? Well, ask him how many, how many black or how many people he's been prosecuted. And ask me how many lives have been saved. I'm a nurse, he's a prosecutor. Of course, if you ask someone, I've been, I've been in office for eight years, I know what I do in office. All right, I want no, to take, take a break. I got to take, I got to take a commercial break. We'll co we're going to keep you both. We're going to end it here. We're going to keep, come back on the other side of this break to continue this debate between State Senator Daphne Campbell and Jason Pizzo, right when we get back.